This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 439-234-1. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. The blue arrows in both images point to where you will find the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box. Then click Send to submit your comment or question to staff. The red arrows in both images point to where you can find handouts, documents, and comment forms for this public meeting. Click the Handouts icon to see available handouts. Click on the file name to download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this meeting, please type the issue in the questions box on the control panel on GoToWebinar or send an email to chuck at valerin-group.com to report it. You may also call GoToWebinar support at 1-833-851-8340. Staff will do their best to assist you. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to explain the project goals, present the department's recommended improvements to help achieve those goals, and hear from the community about the proposed changes. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720 by phone at 386-943-5077 or email melissa.mckinney at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450 by phone at 850-414-4742 or email at stefan.kulikowski at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. This project is located in the city of Ocala in Marion County along State Road 200, also known as Southwest College Road. The project begins just east of Interstate 75 and ends at South Pine Street, also known as US 301. The Financial Project Identification Number, or FPID, for this project is 439-234-1. The purpose of this project is to extend the life of the roadway and make the corridor safer for all users. What makes these proposed changes necessary? As it works to take all steps possible to achieve its goal of zero fatalities and serious injury on state roadways, FDOT has identified certain corridors as candidates for additional safety improvements as part of planned resurfacing projects. The department conducted multiple studies on this corridor. The crash data collected from 2014 to 2018 indicated a 47% increase in crashes over the previous five-year period. And further crash data reviewed from 2019 to 2020 showed this upward trend continued. Factors such as a lack of median restrictions, two-way left turn lanes, and traffic speed contributed to a high crash rate.
This map illustrates that there were almost 1,000 crashes along this corridor from 2015 to 2020. If we overlay this map with the latest concentrations of serious and fatal crashes from 2022, it becomes clear that these proposed safety measures are warranted. Currently, State Road 200 is a seven-lane undivided roadway with three travel lanes in each direction and an unrestricted center two-way left turn lane. The lack of median restrictions on this roadway contributes to the likelihood of more conflict points. Conflict points are points along a roadway where the paths of two vehicles can legally cross, just not at the same time. In other words, a conflict point is a location where a crash can occur. The recommended improvements we will review tonight were designed to help reduce conflict points and therefore reduce crashes and crash-related injuries. These proposed changes will improve safety throughout the corridor by providing safer left-turn opportunities at signalized intersections, reducing congestion within the center turn lane, encouraging safer driving speeds, and enhancing pedestrian connectivity and overall safety for all users. The most significant safety improvement proposed for sections of this corridor is the replacement of the center two-way left turn with a raised landscape median. The proposed typical section or cross-section from east of I-75 to southwest 20th Avenue and from southwest 16th Avenue to South Pine Avenue includes three 11-foot wide travel lanes in each direction to encourage safer driving speeds and a raised median that will vary in width from 7 to 10 feet. The two-way center left turn lane between Southwest 20th Avenue to Southwest 10th Avenue will be maintained. As seen in this artist's rendering of the corridor, replacing the center turn lane with a raised median will require left turns and U-turns to be made at signalized intersections. As mentioned before, the conflict points that exist when a multi-lane roadway has no restrictive median can lead to potential safety issues. The department's careful planning of the location, type, and design of access, also known as access management, is used to provide balance between access and mobility. The purpose of access management is to enhance safety by reducing conflict points. In this case, the median will separate opposing traffic and help to reduce the potential for serious injury crashes. Proposed pedestrian safety enhancements along this corridor include the construction of mid-block crossings equipped with pedestrian hybrid beacons or PHBs. The proposed PHBs will be constructed between Southwest 35th Terrace and Southwest 34th Avenue. Southwest 32nd Avenue and Southwest 26th Street, and Southwest 12th Avenue and Southwest 10th Avenue. This artist's rendering shows how a mid-block crossing with a PHB might look along the project corridor between Southwest 35th Terrace and Southwest 34th Avenue. So, what exactly is a PHB? A pedestrian hybrid beacon, or PHB, is an overhead traffic signal that is designed to provide increased visibility and protection for vulnerable road users at mid-block crossing locations. The following animated video offers a brief demonstration of how a PHB works. The Florida Department of Transportation is working to reduce pedestrian crashes by installing pedestrian hybrid beacons statewide. At the crosswalk, pedestrians press the button to activate the overhead beacon. It will flash yellow, turn solid yellow, then turn solid red, requiring drivers to stop so pedestrians may safely cross. When the beacon flashes red, drivers must stop but can proceed if the crosswalk is clear. When the beacon goes dark, traffic can proceed. FDOT, helping drivers and pedestrians share the road safely. Moving forward, we encourage your input and feedback about this project and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by March 20, 2023, 11 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. 
All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. In-person attendees are encouraged to speak with project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a comment for the public meeting record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. To submit a comment or a question online, please type the comment or question in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 439-234-1. You may also contact the project manager directly by email at ty.garner at dot.state.fl.us or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542, Deland, Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5299 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. To learn more about these projects, go to www.cflroads.com, type the project number 439-234-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go, then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by Monday, March 20, 2023. Contact information, a recording of this presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting are posted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project, forward slash 439-234-1. Have a good evening.